Nonetheless, your lordships will remember all this happened much before the matter went to the election commission, because there they moved on 19th July. So, Nonetheless, all this is so per se unconstitutional. Now come to right to dissent. The respondents have claimed that the 10th schedule cannot be used to stifle dissent within the party, and definitely internal dissent does not amount to voluntarily giving up membership of the party. Well, this whole argument was raised in, the, in Kehoto in the context of Article 105 of the Constitution, not in any other context, and was rejected. And 105 of the Constitution, I'll just quickly read it to your lordships. It says, subject to the provisions of this Constitution, and to the rules and standing orders regulating the procedure of Parliament, there shall be freedom of speech in Parliament. Rejected. Why? Because you are a representative of the political party and bound by the discipline of that party. You have no independent right. Unlike Parliament in England, unlike the Senate and the House, and unlike European Parliament. This court is distrustful of that, is what Kehoto says. I have actually mentioned it yesterday. Every act of theirs from the 21st onwards is an act in violation of 2-1-A. Every act of theirs, which is undisputed. E is the decision of the election commission in the para 15 cannot efface the disqualification income. But whatever may be the, whatever may be the consequence, that disqualification has already happened. Even if the election commission's order is right, which is ex facie wrong, but that's, we'll deal with it separately. This disqualification has happened. That cannot efface the disqualification. That's the purpose of this particular paragraph on WIPs. And they did not address your lordships on this at all. The only thing they gave was that document, which I showed to your lordships yesterday. Only one thing which they have said about yes. WIP is. Yes that uh, they have referred to the disqualification rules. Yes. Oh, yes, I have to deal and, with that. Uh, perhaps you may want to. I'm sorry, I, I should. In my... Related to 3 one... yeah, I'm going to show that immediately, Malaz. That's my mistake. I should have in my desire to finish quickly, Malaz. Kindly go to those disqualification rules. There is compilation, Malaz. The rule you will have to say. Yes, statute compilation. Uh, thank you, Malaz, for reminding me. I should have dealt with it. You have some doubts, so... Yeah. Yes. Malad's uh, definition of leader. Your ladyship has it, my lord has it? Yes, we have it. Leader in relation to a legislature party means a member of the party. Leader in relation to a legislature party means a member of the party, member of the party chosen by it as its leader. Chosen by the party as its leader. Member of the party chosen by it as its leader. Complete misreading of this, uh, this definition, mother. And includes any other member of the party authorized by the party to act in the absence of the leader. Authorized by the party. Consistent, mother, with all my contentions. That this is not in the domain of the legislature party. The party chooses the leader, the party chooses the whip. So this argument that I had thrown you out, Sunil Prabhu thrown you, I had thrown you out, therefore I need not have recognized Sunil Prabhu at all on the third, because I had appointed Gogavle. Among us yesterday, a, a, an argument was made, how could they whip act outside the house? Among us, what were they doing in Assam? Appointing a whip outside the house? They made a serious argument yesterday. This is a whip. How could they do it outside the house? So you are sitting in Assam in the lap of the BJP and you are displacing a whip which is recognized by the political party and conveyed to the speaker and these office bearers are there on the, on the record of the register of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the assembly. And you say Gugable is the whip. I mean, it's per se voluntarily giving up membership. You say I, have, I continue to be the leader. On what ground? You've been removed on the 21st of June itself. So how are you the leader? Well, let's kindly look at it this way for a moment. Well, supposing I say I am the party, what should I do? I should go to the party. 
call a meeting. There are rules of the party. Go and establish your majority in the party. And then become the chief minister. There may be no dispute in the legislature party. Take a case, Mullahs, where there's no dispute in the legislature party. What would a person do if he says that, look, I am the party? He will go to the party. He can't do it any other way. Now, if you are able to galvanize the support of X number of members, there may be minority, there may be majority. And then on the basis of those numbers, you destabilize an elected government and then go to the election commission and on the basis of the fact of those very people who are subject to disqualification, get the symbol and then say, I have the party. Which of the two Murat's procedures would be constitutional? Erroneous conflation of legislature party and political party. Murat, I, I just don't understand on what basis my learned friend made this submission. The whole purpose of the 10th schedule is to talk of the legislative party and the political party as, as separate uh, entities and to prevent, uh, uh, prevent uh, acts which would amount to disqualification. That's the whole purpose. Murat, the Constitution doesn't recognize that. Even Malas, the representation of people act doesn't recognize the legislature party. It is only in the 10th schedule because you wanted to prevent acts of disqualification. It, in furtherance of their smokescreen defense of being in Shiv Sena, the respondents have repeatedly asserted that there is no distinction between a legislative party and a political party. And again, quote from the transcript, we have consistently said so that a legislature party is integral and originally connected and co-joined to a political party. What's the basis of this submission? And I still say, I am the original political party. So first he says, I'm a faction. Now he says, I'm the original political party. Because that faction should be recognized as the, by the governor as the original political party. Now they are prepared, present, presuming, they are presuming that this is only a rival faction. He just said that it's a faction within the legislature party and not a rival faction within the political party. Whereas your lordships have time and again said, you can't segregate the two. A legislature party is also an extension of the political party. That is how it has been right through the whole artificial distinction which has been drawn. That is that the legislature party who did it, uh, who did it and the political party had nothing to do with it. I have never ever said that the two are different. Our argument right through has been the decision of the legislature party has the authority of the political party. How does he get, where does he get that from? Decision of the legislative party has the authority of the political party unless he says my faction is the political party. Thus, in substance, the respondents contend that the faction representing a majority of the legislative party is deemed to be the political party without regard to the political party which has been registered by the election commission under 29A. A fortiori, therefore, without referring to the original political party which has been registered with the election commission, the majority faction contend that they can hold themselves out as a political party and take actions within the house, de the political party on whose ticket they were elected. It is submitted that a majority faction cannot claim that they are the political party registered on the, with the election commission under 29A of the Representation of People's Act. There is nothing in law which allows such a claim to be made. Distinction between the legislature party and the political party is reflected in the provisions of the 10th schedule. Submission of Eknath Sindhya group is contrary to the clear provisions of paragraph 1 and paragraph 2 and the explanation. I have read it to your lordships for this. I will not trouble your lordships with that. Then I will come to... Namalath Para 83, if the respondent submissions were correct or were to be accepted, it would create chaos within the political system with functions within the scheme of the constitution as provided for in its various provisions, including the 10th schedule. So Malath, now come to C4. I will leave the rest, Malath. Respondents have claimed the 10th schedule cannot be used to stifle dissent. Then at the outset, it is respectfully submitted the said contention is in complete violation of the decision in Kyoto where this court specifically considered and rejected the argument that provisions of the 10th schedule violate the freedom of speech and conscience of the legislatures, it was held that people have grown distrustful of the emotive political exaltations that such floor crossings belong to the sacred era area of freedom of conscience or of the right to dissent or of intellectual freedom. The 10th schedule, it is urged, negates those very fundamental assumptions of parliamentary democracy of freedom of speech, of the right of dissent, and the freedom of conscience. This was urged by Mr. Jait Malani. 
It is urged that this unprincipled political defections may be an evil, but it will be the beginning of much greater evils of the remedies graver than the disease itself were adopted. Ten schedule, they say, seeks to throw away the baby with the bathwater. Functions on the strength of shared beliefs. Its own political stability and social utility depends on such shared beliefs and concerted action of its members in furtherance of those commonly held principles. Any freedom of its members to vote as they please independently of the political party's declared policies will not only embarrass its public image and popularity, but also undermine public confidence in it, which in the ultimate analysis is its source of sustenance. And then, Malaz, uh, we... And Mullahs, para 47. Uh, Mullahs, this is a quotation from, from Rodney Brazier. Once returned to the House of Commons, members' party expects him to be loyal. This is not entirely unfair or improper, for it is the price of the party's label which secured his election. Now, Mullahs, this loyalty is for a price which has secured him the chief ministership. If I can put it, Mullahs, differently. Then Mullahs, para 49. Mullahs, uh, the highlighted portion. Unprincipled defection is a political and social evil. It is perceived as such by the legislature. People apparently have grown distrustful of the emotive political exaltations that such floor crossing belong to the sacred area of freedom of conscience or of the right to dissent, or of the intellectual freedom, the anti-defection law sees to recognize the practical need to place the proprieties of political and personal conduct, whose awkward erosion and grotesque manifestation have been the bane of the times. This is recognized by a constitution court. Above certain theoretical assumptions, which in reality have fallen into a morass of personal and political degradation. And this particular litigation is a shining example of that political declaration. We should, we think, defer to the legislature's wisdom and perception. Saying we know the reality, and that's why the 10 schedule, that's why they must not allow to allow, crossing the floor must not be allowed. And then Bomai, whatever may be his personal, I've already, Malaz, 